Hello and welcome to the Monte Carlo simulation experiment with Python. Before we begin, we should establish what a Monte Carlo simulation is. Uh, the idea of a Monte Carlo simulation is to test various outcome possibilities. So in reality, only one of the outcome possibilities will actually play out. But in terms of risk assessment, any of the possibilities could have occurred and therefore should uh, should be weighed into whether or not a decision was a good one. So Monte Carlo simulators are often used to assess risk of a given, say, trading strategy with options or stocks. Monte Carlo simulators can help drive the point home that success is um, success is not the only measure of whether a choice was good or not. Choices should not be assessed after their outcome. Instead, the risks and benefits should only be considered at the time the decision was made. So the whole hindsight bias, uh, you know, we have uh, humans just in general are very good at fitting, you know, reasoning to why something might have occurred after the fact, but we're pretty bad at it before the, before the fact. So a Monte Carlo simulator can help, uh, <clears throat> help someone visualize most or all in some scenarios of the potential outcomes to have a much better idea regarding the risk of a decision. So with that, let's consider uh, in, in this video and the next few videos a really basic example. So here we're going to consider a gambling scenario where a user can roll, quote unquote, a metaphorical dice for an outcome of something like 1 to 100. If the user rolls anything from a 1 to a 50, the quote unquote house wins. If the user rolls anything from a 51 to a 99, the quote unquote user wins. If the user rolls a 100, they lose. So with this, the house maintains a mere 1% edge, which is markedly lower than the odds uh, in most situations where you have speculation or gambling taking place. So for example, consider if you're trading with, say, um, Scott Trade, where the metaphorical house is taking $7 a trade. If you invest $1,000 per stock, this means you have to pay $7 in entry and $7 in exit for a total of $14. So this puts your, you know, the metaphorical house edge to 1.4%. Notably though, Scott Trade is not the actual house, right? So when you lose, you don't pay Scott Trade, right? Um, you just pay them the fee. So the house is basically everyone except for you. <laughs> so this means that on the long ter term scale, your bets or your, your, um, you know, your speculation in stocks need to do better than 1.4% profit, um, need to be better 1.4% profit on average than your losses, right? Otherwise, you will be losing money. So despite the fact that that's a very small number, the odds are already against you. And as you'll see very quickly, um, even with such a small percentage odds against you, like in our case, we're going to use 1%, the more uh, wagers or the more stocks you purchase uh, in this example, um, the less likely uh, your life or the less likely you are to have a long life expectancy here. I expect a lot of people would make arguments uh, regarding my house odds assessment with Scott Trade and stocks and all that. So let's go ahead and just stick with dice with 100 sides for now. Very simple. So a Monte Carlo generator uh, can also help illustrate the flaws of the gambler's fallacy. So many gamblers, even and sometimes especially gamblers who understand statistics, fall prey to the gambler's fallacy. So the fallacy asserts that taking something like flipping, like the flipping of a coin for heads or tails, you have a known 50-50 odds. That said, if you just flipped heads five times in a row, somehow you're more likely to flip tails next. No matter how many times heads have proceeded, your odds each time you flip the coin are always 50-50. So it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that on the long-term scale, odds will kind of uh, be drawn to this 50-50. Therefore, if odds are currently imbalanced, then the next flip's odds are also not 50-50 because they must you know, seek this 50-50 equilibrium. That's not true. It's every flip seeks this 50-50 equilibrium. And as we'll, as we'll find um, with uh, the scenario that we're going to do now, 
uh, it is simply not the case that just because you know something occurs you know a bunch of times even with 50 50 odds it does not mean that the next thing will be the, op the opposite so again with our example in mind just remember uh, if the user rolls a 1 to a 50, the house wins. 51 to 99, the user wins. And a perfect 100 means the house wins. So let's go ahead and begin. So first we have to generate our actual dice. And for this, we're, gonna, we're just going to employ the pseudo random number generator within Python. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So <clears throat> we're going to import... Oops, let me put my... Well, that's odd. There we go. Import random and now we're going to define roll dice uh, no parameters for this and we're just going to say roll equals random dot rand int so this is just a random integer between 1 and 100 and that's it so then at the end of this we'll return the roll um, and that's it for now. So now let's go ahead and just quickly test our dice, make sure it's giving us what we want. So we're just going to say x equals 0, while x is less than 100. Result equals roll dice. Print results, and then x plus equals 1. Sounds good. Uh, we'll save and we'll run this. And sure enough, here is our output um, here. So here's obviously a 1 and then a bunch of numbers. I don't see a 100. Uh, but it was possible, we just didn't get one. So now that we have a dice, um, or die, what we want now is we need a better. So we need to make um, just a simple better in our program. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next video is uh, creating our better uh, who's going to bet on this dice roll. So uh, anyway, stay tuned to the next video. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.